Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. It's uh, it's hot outside. It's Monday morning and it's hot. It's not terribly hot, but it's hotter than I like. So we're hiding in the shop today. It's new project day. Unfortunately, it's not really a new project. This is an ongoing project that I've had started since last fall. And we're gonna get started on the, I guess the final stage of this section anyways. Let me show you what we got here. So last fall, I bought three expeditions. Uh, 15 to 17 are the model years. Uh, this one here is the parts one. So this is a 15. This one was hit. If we go back here and look at the rear, this backed into a tree at a high rate of speed, I suppose you could say. And it's buckled into the floor pretty good. It's a 15. I think it's got like 135,000 miles on it. Anyways, so before I bought this one, I bought a 17 with 90,000 miles, same color, hit in the front. So imagine, if you will, this was the front of the first truck. Now, the first truck is already gone, so I can't really show it. If I find a picture, I'll, I'll show it up there. But So I bought one hit in the front, and then I bought this truck hit in the rear. And then I took the front end off of this 15, which again is the same color, uh, Cameron and I, my daughter, we pulled them both in on a Saturday, blew the front end off of this one, blew the front end off the other one, switched the parts. I put the old parts on this truck just to try to keep the weather out of it. And I think we had grand total, I had 11 hours in the whole deal. Switching the parts, putting it together, and I had to buy one harness that was 100 bucks for the fog lights. Anyway, and that's all we had in that one. And my wife ended up driving that one all last winter. It was a great truck. I actually kind of miss it. I used it for hauling last winter. She drove it for the, you know, during the terrible times. The Bronco stayed in the shop. So then I bought this one. So this one is a 17 with 110,000 miles. As you can see, it's white down the side. Again, same color. Uh, ruby red. Tri-coat. Sucks to paint. So parts truck. Ruby red, good parts. So same thing, we're gonna unbolt the parts off of this truck, we're gonna bolt them onto this truck. Boom, done. Well, that's what I thought anyways. That was the original plan. Until I got the truck here, and we can see that uh, the hit came in further than planned. Um, this is all crushed in here, but I believe it's just the exterior. I don't think it's the actual inner structure at all. Uh, maybe just a little bit right here on this corner, but we're not gonna know until we get in there. So the plan is still to take the parts off for this truck, put them on this truck, but we're gonna have to do some, a little bit of framework down in here. Not really frame, but it's on the frame machine, so we call it framework. So we're gonna probably take the inner structure out of that one, put it in this one, fix this corner, and we're gonna take the wheels off of that truck, put them on this truck. We're gonna take the running boards off of that truck, put them on this truck, we're going to take the driver's seat out of that truck, put it in this truck. We're going to take the four-wheel drive switch that's broke out of this truck and replace it with the one out of that truck. And then the only thing I should have to do, uh, I did have to put a windshield in it because the windshield was cracked. I did have to put a new battery in it because the battery was junk. But it does have some damage up here in this lower bumper. So this is a two-part bumper. It's got a lower and an upper. Um, the upper, I think, is good. The lower. We'll just have to order a new one because I've already used the bumper on the first truck. So I'm going to have to buy a new bumper and that sucks because they're pretty expensive from Ford. But the plan is what I'm after is I want the drivetrain out of this truck. I got an off-road project that I want to build in the future here. And I want to do a 3.5 EcoBoost with a six-speed tranny. So the plan was buy three trucks, fix two trucks, sell both trucks, and get this truck for free. Fortunately, the first truck is already gone. I finished that, drove it all winter, sold it, and actually what I sold that truck for almost paid for all three trucks. So basically, this truck is going to be almost pure profit except for the parts that I have to put in it, which is a windshield, a lower bumper, a battery, 
I'm sure there'll be some other trinkets and stuff like that. So this one is pretty much going to be pure profit. And this one is free at the end of the day. <clears throat> so today's plan, we're going to get the doors off, the fender off, get all the parts off, get them switched for the most part. And then once that's done, I doubt it'll be another day, but it won't be for you. We'll just skip right on through. But plan is to get the doors on so I can see how bad the inner structure is. And then we're going to do some pulling, do some beating around, replace the metal. junk stuff torn off I guess I did not get the bumper off yet but um, I'm not really concerned with that right now obviously our main issue is back here and now with the doors off you can kind of really see this big kink right here and this whole thing is laid in right here but the pinch welds and everything upper and lower seem to be perfect um, I don't see any damage there so I really think it's just in this outer skin so the plan is uh, tomorrow, I'm probably going to like section it right across here. I'm going to try to stay off the quarter panel and down in here where this trim goes. So I'll probably section it through here. And then we're going to go up to probably around here somewhere. There's a kink right here. But I think if I cut it back here, I can get in behind it, pull that out a little bit, straighten that. I'm trying to stay out of the B pillar there. So come down through here. We'll get this off and out of the way and see what see what's underneath of it I guess but before I do that I think we're gonna get the doors the new doors put on so I can make sure that the hinge area and all that is not kinked or bent basically see how they fit so I'm gonna throw the front door on the back door on I'm not gonna put any wiring in the back door obviously because we're just gonna be taking it back off again so anyways let's throw a couple doors on and see how it looks So with the doors on, it's pretty much what I expected. Uh, there's a buckle right here, and this is in, obviously, you know, a good half inch. So this section here needs to come out. Uh, this down here, I'm not even going to look at that because that's going to cut off, and there's a big piece of molding that goes on here, so don't mind that gap. I'm just worried about this gap right here. So I think if we section it through here like we talked about, stay off of the quarter panel itself, then I'm hoping to come in here and hook up behind there and just work. Once we get this pressure off, work that out, pound that in. A little body work right here. Replace that. I don't know. Should be pretty simple. So, anyways, that's it for today. We'll get started on it again tomorrow. We'll hack some crap apart and see what's going on underneath, underneath that, I guess. So, see you in the morning. Oh, good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon actually morning didn't happen <laughs> anyways we're back on the uh, expedition here I got a head start without you simply because I didn't think you really wanted to watch me drill a bunch of holes so quick guide of what I did um, use an eighth inch drill bit to go through the center of the spot welds okay and then I use a standard 3 8 bit to basically take the majority of the material out and then came back with a 3 8 roto broach bit by Blair a uh, handy little machine here a little expensive so you kind of want to favor that anyways basically went through took the spot welds out of the first layer of sheet metal and then basically I just take a wood chisel small wood chisel the hammer go down in there separate the panels and other than that we're going to finish up a few things here we'll get it cut around here somewhere cut around here like we talked about get this panel off see what's underneath <coughs>
Well, we got that off. There's a little bit of a fight up here in this corner because we got this uh, kind of like a glue, foamy, crappy stuff that they jam down the corner of these things. But uh, this will have to come out, which is just, it's not, it's just a piece of plastic, basically. We're going to trim this off right here because that is like the number one fire starter when you're welding stuff back together. So that's going to have to get removed. We'll leave this section down here. So the, this is the drain for the sunroof. So that all has to stay there. Obviously, we got just a little damage right here on this little inner structure here. Um, what we'll probably do is just end up just cutting this piece off. Could take a couple spot welds out from behind here and weld in a new one. Or I might pull this out and straighten it out. I haven't decided yet. So other than that, yeah, there's nothing inside here. So there's no structure damage anywhere. It's basically just this outer sheet metal. So now we just got to go over to that one and do it all over again. So I won't, I'm not going to record that, though. I'll let you know when I get it off. Okay, we got the other one off the truck and we got it cut and fit for the most part. A uh, little fine details to do yet, but we'll do that as I weld it on basically. So I just got the uh, flare set back on here to make sure everything kind of is going to go back to where I want it, which it is. Uh, door, we got that quarter pull back out pretty much back where I want it. I need to do a little work right here in this corner yet, but I can't do it until that's welded solid because this is kind of weak right now as far as pulling on it so we're going to get it uh, the plan is is we're going to panel bond this section here the spot welds on the top and the spot welds on the bottom we're going to panel bond clamp and let sit for 24 hours why that is clamped i'm going to weld the seams on the end weld the seams on the end i'll probably weld these spot welds back in because they're easy to get to but with using the panel bond especially on the bottom section it, it helps to prevent corrosion from later on because if we grind it and then weld it, we can't really get in there and treat it, especially where the factory was. So by using panel bond, it will seal the entire surface area between the two pieces. And I feel it'll just be a better overall quality, I guess you could say, as far as preventing it from rusting. So we are going to get this set up and done. Um, I, I'm not going to set up time lapse or anything. It's pretty boring to watch me weld and burn holes through shit. So. Anyways, we'll uh, get this wrapped up and let you know what it looks like when we're finished. So we've got everything set up here. I've already got that part ready and the underside ready. So this is the uh, 3M08115. Anyways, panel bond, it's about a 24 hour. It gives you plenty of work time, but it's 24 hour cure time. So basically what I do is my recommendations anyways you put on a nice bead across I mean we already ground everything down with 50 grit on the two inch with the roll ox there so now we are just putting on basically the protective layer and the adhesion layer so this is just a chip brush from Menards just a cheap piece of crap and I just take a scissors and I cut off about an inch of the bristle so it's pretty firm and uh, basically just now we're just covering all the bare metal with a nice coating of panel bond here and then this is going to also give it something this stuff is super sticky so that's going to give it good adhesion and we did both sides so i did this side and i did the panel so now on the inside basically all the bare metal is for the most part sealed up it's the best we're going to be able to do with what we have to work with basically this is the way i believe it should be done so now that that is all covered, and as far as these welds here, I set it up where there's an access hole right here on the inside of the rocker. So I can get up in there and spray that when we're all done. And then up in here, yeah, kind of on your own, but that's pretty far up there. The crap usually doesn't get up there. The road salt comes in these rocker holes right here, comes in through the inner rocker, sits down in that rocker, and that's what rots them out. But that's a whole nother story. So anyways... We got a coat on everything, so now we're going to run back. We're going to put another nice bead kind of right down through the center of the contact area. And this is what's going to hold it all together. So now that we got everything gooped up and ready to go, just a matter to put it on and clamp it in.
So you can clamp it. Um, you know, in this particular situation, I think I have a couple holes here. I can put a couple screws in to hold it. But other than that, you pretty much need every pair of ice grips you own, and sometimes your neighbors also. Because it takes a lot. You want it to clamp as much as you can. You don't want it to move, actually. Clamp that down. But you don't want to clamp it too tight either, because you don't want to squeeze it all out. It needs to stay in there. Well, that's about every pair of vice grips I own. I got clamped down it right now. It's uh, we got the 3M panel bond in there between all the surfaces. Obviously, it squeezed out real well. I didn't get super aggressive. I clamped it tight, but not super tight. I don't want you know. I don't want to squeeze it all out. You also do not want it to squeeze out around your vice grips or don't put your vice grips where it's going to squeeze out at, like um, through these spot weld holes. It will panel bond those vice grips to the vehicle and technically you're probably not going to get them back off without getting pretty aggressive on something. I also have screws holding it while the panel bond sets up, one on each side. You can do that also, but these screws don't like to come back out because again, they are epoxied in there basically. So. If they don't come back out, I'm just going to go through and whack them off with the grinder. No big deal. While the panel bond here is setting up, I'm going to go ahead and get set up, and I'm going to start tacking in, uh, working my way across these seams here, especially on the underside, because that part sucks. So I'm going to get as much done as I can without getting too much heat in the corner by the panel bond there. So basically, i got 24 hours for this to set up, so nothing left to do. So I might as well get a head start on those two parts there. So. welded in. Uh, everything went actually really well. Um, I didn't light the truck on fire. That's always a good day in my book. So we got everything ground up, ground down, whatever way you want to look at it. We sanded out everything we could. Now we're just basically just waiting on the panel bond now. We'll uh, let that sit overnight tomorrow. I'll basically clean that up. A little bit of body work, a little bit of primer, or a little bit of primer, a little bit of body work, then a little bit of primer. And then uh, pretty much we'll get it ready for paint. We'll, we'll skip that stuff and just go straight to the painting part. How's that sound? Well, it's a new day in the shop. Actually, it's a new week in the shop. <laughs> we got all the body work done on the expedition. We've been bouncing back and forth between the expedition and building our little 302 here for the 86 T-top Mustang. So, got to get that done too. So anyways, back to the expedition. We got our body work done. We had a uh, couple small dings in the door. Might as well fix them while I'm in there. Um, our inner structure, obviously, we got all cleaned up, ready to go. It's uh, primer, blocked it out, reprimed again. So it's got about six coats of primer on it, two coats of epoxy. So it should be well protected. For the most part, we're going to get uh, two coats of sealer put on. Now, usually, I don't usually I don't spray the jam and the car at the same time. Sometimes I do, but this one here, the plan was to to jam the inside out and then put the door back on and uh, then put the door back on and spray the outside of the truck, especially because it's a tri-coat. This is a 17 Ford, so it's a paint coat RR, which is ruby red. It's a tri-coat red, four variances. It's kind of, a, kind of a bitchy color to spray, but so I want the door on the truck to spray it. So like I said, the plan was to jam it out last night and then put it together today. But we had some strong storms come through last night, ended up knocking the power out for I think we were down for a little over two hours, but the, there was a lot of areas out of power, so I thought it was going to be an all-night event. So we never got to painting last night, basically. I didn't want to press my luck by starting anything and then having the power go back out again. So put it off till today. I can't jam it out today and paint it tomorrow. I'm busy tomorrow. It's got to be ready Thursday for the paintless dent guy to come. He's got a couple dents to fix on the other side. So we're going to do it this way. It'll work. It's just there's a lot more masking and it's a lot more screwing around but anyways we're gonna get that coat of sealer put on two coats of sealer and let that flash 
Then we're going to put a coat of DVC 500, which again, just a clear base coat over the blend areas. And then we will uh, get probably four coats of the first stage of the red, the uh, primary color, and then if I remember correctly, ruby red takes two coats of the tri, not tri, the mid coat, and then three coats clear. So we're going to get started. Here we go. Well, that's where we're at here, I guess. That's what, two coats of sealer? At least, well, okay, two coats of sealer, one coat of, no, two coats of DVC 500, again, clear base coat for the blend. Four coats, at least four coats of base. Two, probably three coats of the, the uh, mid coat. And other than that, I think everything's good to go. It's good enough anyways. It's just a 17 Expedition. Ain't making no show truck. So we are gonna blast on Two coats of clear on the truck and probably three on the bumper itself so we're gonna get set up I got a fresh cup of DC 3000 mixed up in the gun ready to go and I think we're ready run tack cloth over here get it done and get out of here here we go Well, we finished up our clear, so two coats on the truck, three coats on the front bumper, just a little added protection basically, so it can take a few rock chips. Other than that, we're going to let this thing sit overnight, dry. Tomorrow I'm going to be gone, so I don't know, Thursday, start putting it together. All right, well, it's a new day again, and we are back on the expedition. So, took the opportunity this morning to get it all unmasked and ready to go. I uh, did put a few things back together, door panels, trim, stuff like that. Got this quarter trim put back on there, good to go that way. So now we just have to pull the front end apart. So I'm going to basically throw the fender on it, get this thing moved around, get the front bumper off it so we can switch the new bumper onto it, put it back together. It's not going to match, I'm sure, but it is what it is. And then uh, get going, get it out of here. So here we go.
appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one.